Player controller is the heart of any action game. Players can forgive many things if character controller is done greatly and invokes joy of movement. Dark Souls series have one of the best controllers in the industry, and the big part of it is camera. Its move, its delayed movement creates a nice feel of weight and cinematic effect of character body not being in the center of the screen all the time. And the elephant in the room is, of course, the ability to lock on the target, which at first sight seems to be boiling down to single look at function, but a close look uncovers a very complex movement which can be implemented easily with standard tools and node parenting. I wasn't able to find a perfect solution for souls like camera, so I've done it myself and decided to share. This tutorial will be broken down to a series of two or three videos of following content. The first video will cover subject overview, basic camera node structure and geometry of truly circular orbiting around the target or camera. The second video will cover target locking and unlocking, and maybe there will be a third one with nice things to add like mouse freeing, limiting camera angles and light dot to mark the target as in the Souls series. Disclaimer: I will of course include the code, but by functions and not by classes. I also won't provide any tutorial project to copy code from, partly because I'm a bit of a hater for distribution of isolated tutorial project, and partly because I didn't create it myself, as I experimented with this camera in my main project. So instead of providing a class or a node, I will provide you algorithms and understanding of them, and only the functions which implement them without the hierarchy context of where to store these functions inside your project. To the content, let's observe the source. As mentioned, the Dark Souls camera has a nice smooth delay to its movement, so already there is some lurping to do with a logical point of desired camera location and current camera location. We can also notice that camera looks on some logical point, let's call it focus point, and not on the player. The focus point then follows either the player chest or the enemy. Also note that although targeting marker marks enemy chest zone, the focus point actually follows enemy's feet. Note the nice cinematographic behavior when we rotate our camera du during the run. Player aligns slightly to the border of the screen. This behavior will be one of indicators of our success. Next important note is that the player leaves inside the polar coordinates. The up-down input axis corresponds to from camera and to camera movement, as most 3D controllers do. But left-right input axis makes character run in circles around the camera and doesn't make him move in a straight line. And when player locks on the enemy, that target then becomes the center of the coordinates. Up-down is now to from it and left-right input orbits us around the target. Summarizing, the camera looks constantly at focus point and tries to position itself on some camera nest point, which located relatively to focus point. Focus point then follows some target, either the player or the enemy, so at least camera plus two nodes, but it's actually camera and three nodes because of some behavior during the targeting. And the glue between these nodes is a very important parameter of offset vector, which defines the camera arm length. All this behavior can be implemented directly in your player scene, but I recommend creating a scene-ready component, so let's create a separate scene for our camera and add it to player as a single unit after. Create a scene inheriting a simple node and give it a class name. Create a camera and three node 3Ds. Focus point, camera nest and camera mount. Give each of logical points a visible child of your choice. This is a temporary measure and will help you with your imminent debugging process. And a life hack. Have a global level static camera looking from the sky. Default it to current. Then in player script have a ready function implemented and there make the player's camera current instead. The point is you can comment and uncomment this string and through it you can check the character behavior from the better angle during the development. Create internal variables for these logical points and leave for a while to talk about our movement. 
The usual movement routine is to create a single vector from inputs. For our current circular movement, we need to split movement inputs into two vectors. From target, WS axis, and orbison, AD axis. Forward one we won't touch, and the orbiting one we will snap to a circle of a known radius, leading to it slightly rotating. Then we will add these two components and limit the result length by our speed value. That's how you get a velocity vector to give it to your moving slides. If you skip this step, you will create a Dark Souls from Wish controller, where player moves not in a circle around the target or camera, but moves around it in a spiral motion. How to conveniently find the modified orbiting vector. Godot has a building function that returns a vector rotated around given axis for a given angle. We can use it on a known radius vector from target to the player, if only we knew of the function which defines an angle from the length of the orbit vector. We know this function. Let's call this angle alpha. The orbit vector is a chord to the circle, and all chords are perpendicular to the radius which crosses them in the center. So the angle which is the half of alpha is a sin of half of d to the radius. Alpha equals 2 a sin of d divided by 2 radiuses. In terms of the code, I don't know how you implement your movement and what your input train consists of, but you will have this movement function somewhere and it must look something like it. As you can see, you need two input parameters, a character and its data, and some structure to store your input's vectors. Voila! The player now moves in circles around the camera, even though the camera does nothing still. Now to the camera rotation. Another disclaimer, Dark Souls series uses a spring arc system, and I intentionally don't do it, as I think this solution is not ideal and takes control fro from the player. However, spring arm in its core is just a smart ass vector with dynamic length, so if you want to use spring arm, you can still use this tutorial and self adapt it. Look closely to the part where I talk about changing offset vector anyhow. First, we need to somehow tell our camera what to focus on. For this, export a node 3D and call it something like look at. When adding this camera node to, to the player character, create a camera focus point, also as a node 3D, and assign it to the export window. This point is the player chess zone, that is being followed by a focus point on of our camera. In the system, where you don't have target locking, we have only two key behaviors. What to do on a regular update basis, and what to do if user decides to touch their mouse. Input rotation is easier, so let's begin with that. Godot has built-in mouse event data, which contains relative x and relative y motions of the mouse. x for horizontal mouse movement and y for vertical ones, of course. What we will do is we take delta mouse movement and somehow count delta angle from that movement length. Then we rotate our, our offset vector for that angle by corresponding axis. And the recipe for counting angle for small delta movements is to don't give a fuck and just take the number with some sensitivity multipliers. The reason is our delta movements are very small and for small angles sin alpha almost equals alpha. I divide by thousand and simultaneously multiply by sense number for user to modify their sensitivity with a convenient number. For the horizontal movement all is cheeky bricky because the rotation axis is just a vertical axis. The axis of vertical rotation is dynamic and not so clear, we need to calculate it. There is a nice vector operation called vector crossing. Long story short, it's a built-in way to get a vector which is perpendicular to two given vectors simultaneously. One of such vectors is vertical axis, and the other one is just our offset. Look at the picture. And then there is some additional work to do, because we want to limit our vertical rotation, but I'll skip it for today. The more difficult algorithm is update cycle. The top layer is trivial. Imagine your character moved somehow. First, we make focus point follow character. 
then we adjust camera mount and camera nest to mimic focus movements, but we don't want to change offset length, and we don't want to simply translate it. Then in the end we adjust camera position and the line of sight. But inside this first function about moving focus point is the core function of rotate offset. And yeah, I won't lie to you, these like 15 strings took about 10 hours of my life. The geometry stunt we are trying to code is fairly easy, but for some reason I tried like 4 different solutions before I managed to express myself to Godot in a way it agreed to work properly. What we do here is we want to move from one offset to another after focus point movement. One way to do it is to count this angle and rotate offset by vertical axis. And the awful bunch of additional variables with zero and y coordinate is due to us wanting only the angle of projected horizontally picture and not the angle in 3D between these vectors. And the decider part is once again uses the vector crossing to decide if we want to rotate to the right or to the left. That's all for today. In the next video I will cover target locking and we will improve this node's design with stays and inheritance. That's my first video, so I'll be reading comments like an addict. Feel free to ask questions.